So now that we have a strong foundational and background understanding of what cleavages are, we're going to now look at some specific examples and contextualize our understanding of cleavages. So we'll entitle the next couple of flowcharts Cleavage Patterns, and the first one that we'll entitle is Cleavage Patterns 1. So here what we're going to look at are two different types of cleavage patterns because remember, cleavage patterns are dependent on yolk presence and yolk presence is dependent on the species and embryo needs and therefore we're going to see some differences between different species and organisms that we look at. Their cleavage patterns will be different. So first, of course, is our or our good friends sea urchins. These are deuterostomes. Let's put that in first. So if you remember, deuterostomes Deutero means second. The mouth forms second here. So they're still relatively complex animals. They're not that simple. And if you remember, if you're a deuterostome, much like all of the examples that we'll see from this point forward, they are going to undergo radial cleavage and also will undergo indeterminate cleavage. So this is in terms of the diagonal crosses and division cleavage events that are going to occur uh, that are uh, across the developing blastula. And the indeterminate side means that every single sort of cell will have the capability of uh, either picking up the picking up the slack for the other or still becoming an embryo even if it's removed and put in the right condition. So that's our indeterminate nature of deuterostomes. Overall about sea urchins, what you need to understand is that sea urchins will have something called a uniform uh, sort of cleavage events across the embryo. Across embryo. Uniform cleavage, I should say, across embryo. Every time a cleavage happens, every single cell will directly be sort of split in half or split directly and equally. So all cells are dividing the same way, in other words. All cells are dividing the same way. So there's no sort of influence of a yoke, not as much of an influence, as I should say. Thus, what we're going to have is a similar uniform cleavage across the developing embryo of the sea urchin. This is seen in figure 47.6. So now, let's sort of go a little bit more advanced than a sea urchin, and let's go to something that is not completely reliant on land. Remember that transition to land that we had? We're going to look at an amphibian. That's going to be sort of that middleman between land and water, still has to go to water for fertilization, etc. So now let's look at something called a frog, something familiar to many people. So frogs, what's different about them compared to sea urchins? There's a lot different, actually. Frogs are going to undergo, from the onset, we should understand it, they undergo asymmetric cleavages. So they will undergo asymmetric cleavage. What does this mean? This means that they are not going to be uniform. In other words, they are not uniform. So they are not uniform. Why? Because of that yolk presence. Specifically, I'll say the yolk distribution this time. Because the yolk distribution will directly and heavily influence the way cleavage patterns will happen within a frog. Why is that? Why does the yolk have such a big presence? Well, what we're going to first understand is that most of the yolk, there's a, a decent amount of yolk within a frog, but most of the yolk is on one side and that can be referred to as at one pole of the large egg. Remember that egg has to get fertilized and once it gets fertilized and plasmogamy happens and karyogamy happens you're going to have cleavages, you're going to have divisions from zygote to embryo. Now this yolk structure which is part of the egg structure is going to be sort of in the way. It's going to be a lot at one side and that one side where a lot of yolk is is going to be referred to from this point forward as the vegetal pole. So this is called the vegetal pole. And then there's going to be the opposite side. The opposite pole, which does not have any yolk at it, is going to be called the animal pole. So keep those two terms in mind. We're going to be using them a lot. This overall, as you imagine, if you have one side with something and the other side with nothing, this is going to, of course, affect the way that the vision happens. This affects cleavage patterns. This affects the way that this embryo will cleavage, will divide and develop their force. So it's important to recognize. So how does it affect it? We're going to look at that in greater detail in the next video when we continue about frogs. But what we need to sort of broadly understand is that frogs undergo a process known as holoblastic cleavage. They undergo holoblastic cleavage. 
cleavage. And this is going to be a sort of signifying moment in the cleavage patterns that we see. Hollow means whole in the Greek, and this is going to be sort of whole divisions, whole cleavage events that are going to occur. What do I mean by this? Here what we need to understand is that the yolk structure, as we mentioned before, the yolk composition is very thick. It is not a thin material. It is not sort of this sort of flowing material. It's a very prominent material found within the egg cell that is dividing, that is trying to develop, and thus it will be influenced by the presence of the yolk. How is it going to be influenced? How is the yolk going to have any influence on this cleavage event? And we know it's going to be asymmetric, but why? This is going to be the yolk specifically. It causes this. It causes slowing down of cytokinesis. Now, how might it do that? It's going to cause a slowing down of cytokinesis completion, let's say, at a specific side of this embryo, at a specific side, and that's going to be at, of course, where the yolk is present, at the vegetal hemisphere. So if we imagine that there's going to be two sides, two poles, and if we imagine an equator that divides those two poles, the animal pole and the vegetal pole, the hemisphere that has the vegetal pole at it will have a slower form of cytokinesis. It will have slower cell divisions. It will have slower cleavages. And the other animal side, the animal pole, will be dividing very much easily and quickly. And this is unequal. This is asymmetric cleavage, in other words. So what you notice is that that cleavage furrow that we talked about when we broadly looked at cleavage, that cleavage furrow, which is an indentation, sort of a mark that signifies that cytokinesis has happened, what you need to understand is that that cleavage furrow still passes, because it undergoes hollow blastic cleavage, still passes through the entire egg. In essence, what we're saying is that the egg as a whole will have an indentation through the entire egg, even though there's two sides to it. And because that indentation is equally going through the entire egg, one side of the egg, because it's getting the same amount of, let's say, division, same amount of indentation as the other side of the egg, will do more division. And the other side, even though it's getting the same amount, it has this yolk on it, it will do less division, you could say. And that's what we're going to look at even further in the next video when we talk specifically about the overall consequences of a holoblastic cleavage mixing with an asymmetric cleavage within a developing frog embryo.